This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. It's Wednesday Wonders, science fiction and fantasy on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Moonbase, Hope Colony. The year is 4067. Our ancestors were sent here to preserve mankind in the face of the devastation on Earth. Unbeknownst to us, Earth survived. We can never go home to that atmosphere and survive it. We are the next iteration of mankind's future. Listen to our stories as we continue to adapt to this harsh environment. The Kyleson Chronicles legacy can continue through our struggles here in space. Our home. Welcome back to Carlson Chronicles. Let us join our narration with the updates from the Hope Colony. Jim, take it away. Hello there, and welcome back. Thank you, Jerry. This is Jim Frank. I'm your narrator for this holiday episode. The date is December 24th, 4067 at 0422 hours. We join Rachel as she stands at the event horizon, hoping to raise Kyle Robson. No, oh, I just don't know how to handle everything that's going on. Please, Kyle, say something, anything. I need you, I'm so scared. If you're there listening, so be it. We haven't heard anything from Two Feathers or any of his clan, we've sent out runners to locate him. Hopefully they find him soon. Cassie and Rory are getting the scribes prepped and ready to go to the moon. Oh, Kyle, you should see her. She absolutely glows with this pregnancy. She intuitively knows that this baby is going to be a boy. Rory is absolutely elated, walks around like a proud peacock. I have to laugh every time I look at him. As far as me going to the moon, I am not. I want to stay with you for as long as I can. My life is already fulfilled with what we had and the kids. Besides, there will be those that do stay behind, that'll need my help and guidance. Who will teach them their studies, is what I've imparted to everyone that's asked. Ian will be going to Hope Colony. My heart hurts knowing that I won't see him or Cassie for a very long time or maybe ever. Kyle, why don't you answer? Please come back to me. I'm being paged. I, I must return to help with the preparations. We will talk later, my love. What Rachel doesn't know is that Kyle was at the mouth of the event horizon listening. Because she did not enter the horizon, she never received the message he did speak. I'm here. It's not yet time for us to be still. December 24th, 4067, 0507 hours. It's time to find out what's going on with Hope Colony. Colonel Michaels and Santiago are in a heated debate over assigned quarters. Mo Gibbons joins them to find out all the needs for nutrition. She watches in amusement. They don't even realize she's there. I don't care. Protocols have to be followed. There are going to be people that need medical attention as they're coming through the passage. We are not going to have enough time to wait on protocols. You are the most stubborn man I have ever known. Look, 
This base and security is at my utmost concern, not to mention priority. If I have to go to Walker, I will do so. You insufferable pompous... Oh, I give up. Okay, okay, you two. Enough! This is not going to get either of you two anywhere. This bickering has to stop. Get a room and be done with it already. Mo. No. Well, you two fight like an old married couple. You young lady are so insolent. Let's see, Jamie, you see the medical side as the most important at any time on this base. In Santiago, you believe the security is always at risk. You're both right and wrong at the same time. There has to be some give in this situation. What are you suggesting? Santiago, of course. Safety is the utmost importance. But these folks are coming from a planet that has just rejected them being there. Surely there can be a little relaxation to all these rules and regulations, can't there? Put like that, there has to be a way to overlook the most stringent of these rules. Just a little give. And you, yes, their health and mental welfare are just as important. However, did it ever dawn on you they just want to get to safety, probably rest, and then get their exams done maybe the next day? From the look on your face, that answer is yes. Good. Now, I have my own concerns. Come with me, both of you. Well, Mo sure settled that one. She always seems so quiet. As they go into Mo's office, more is happening outside of their view. We are going to take a short sponsor break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jack Ward, and from all of us here at the Mutual Audio Network, we'd like to say thank you for making this our fourth season. With hundreds of original shows, we are the world's largest curated podcast and podcast family collection of audio drama and audio fiction. And it's all because of you. We couldn't be more grateful because it's here at Mutual where we listen and imagine together. We're back to our scheduled programming. Jim, you've got it from here. Let's turn our attention to the command center, where General Walker is holding an assembly meeting with his section chiefs. Delphi, what have you come up with for answers as to what's happened on Earth? So far, we know that Earth is in its infancy with repairs and grow to all that has happened in the past. Any slight disturbance in the atmosphere would have caused damage. The extraction of oil, movement of any of the volatiles, is what has triggered this reaction of the volcanoes going on. Surely they would have known not to drill for anything of that magnitude. They expected to be able to go back and do the same things their ancestors were guilty of in the first place. From what we've gleaned of the communications since the resurfacing from the freeholds, they have been doing exactly that. Good God, surely not. I would have thought all these drastic measures we'd taken would have told them not to go back to the old ways. What can be done to reverse this, honestly? It will take another 60, maybe 100 years for this damage to be repaired through time alone. They can't put back what has been taken from the ground. I'll be looking into this with Ian Kyleson, I can assure you of that. Now, the next item is our own resources. Do we have enough quarters, clothing, food, and expendables to get these people settled down? Penny, I believe this is your area. So far, we have enough reserves to handle the 5,000 refugees. This base can handle much more than that, though. However, we can also shift about half of those to Venus Space Station. Doc over there says they have the capacity to handle up to 2,500 extra people. Children included. I wouldn't want to go over there. They have strange goings on that no one can explain. How does she handle that subject? Doc says they have found the culprits. They have been judiciously taken care of and sentenced to the prisons on Saturn. She didn't go into further detail. Quite frankly, I didn't ask. It's a relief to know that we have a backup for people to go to. Trip, is there going to be any detrimental effects to the environment on the station? Not 100% sure on that note. I don't believe we will notice any change. We do have all the plants on the station to help purify the air. We may need several hundred more of those 
to pick up any residual downside. We have already started the germination process in hydroponics. The farm experts have given me a 20-day notice to completion. We do have the internal systems at only half capacity of use. If need be, we can turn those up to 90% until hydroponics has completed their assignment. Very well. McCollin, are the engineers ready for the influx of people on the base in their quarters? We had a short meeting earlier on this subject. An improvised schedule has been implemented to take care of any possible problems that may arise. My department is fully staffed and stocked to prevent or fix any problems that may arise. Good. Let's break for lunch. Meet back here at, say, 1400 hours. Ruby, I'll need your help with a few things before I can go to lunch. Yes, sir. I shall be sitting at my desk awaiting your instructions. Everyone's dismissed for lunch. Be back here at 1400 hours. Walker watched as everyone vacated his office. He quickly walked out to Ruby's desk, handing her a list of things he had jotted down during the meeting. He waited patiently as she read over the list. By the way, how soon do you want these items? You know, it might take a while to find all these things. I want them as soon as possible. I don't care how or who you have to bribe or barter with, but we'll need those items ASAP. Well, it might also take some time to find the holsters. I should go by the armory and see what they have. Do you want kits put together for everyone? That'd be perfect. Get Penny to help you put those together. These are going to be very important to have as we start getting the travelers coming through the passage. Yes, sir. I would like to go get something to eat. Would you like for me to bring something back for you? No, I'll walk down to the mess with you. I need to get away from this office for a little bit. Feels like it's closing in on me right now. Are you sure you're okay, sir? With everything that's going on, I forgot to eat breakfast. Uh, unfortunately, I'm the only one in my family that has the diabetic gene, and it's in full swing right now. Let's shut this place down and get out of here. Ruby laid the note down on her desk. The list was a recipe for possible danger that could be coming. One of the items on that list was to issue handguns and holsters to all personnel on the base. With that bit of news, I'm going to turn this over to the announcer. We are going to take a short sponsor break. We'll be right back. From all of us here at the Mutual Audio Network, we thank all our listeners and creators for making us an award-winning home for four seasons of audio drama and audio fiction. We're back to our scheduled programming. Jim, you've got a premiere. We join General Walker, talking with his dad in the mess hall. Looks like he's coordinating with him for the arrival of the refugees from Earth. Let's listen in. Dad, I really need your help on this. I can't be in two places at the same time. All right, all right already. I only thought I was retired. <laughs> okay, tell me what you want me to do. This is your show now, not mine. Bless you and thank you. What I need you to do is make sure all the dignitaries come in and get first-rate handling. That's always been your forte, Dad. I'm counting on you to take good care of these folks, especially Ian Kyleson. I'll have his quarters in the upper officer's deck close to mine. This kid must be really important to you. What's so special about him? You're acting as though he's a four-star general or something. In terms of civilians, he would be just exactly that. He's the head scribe for all of Earth, Dad. This young man has enough power behind him to shut this whole moon base down if he wanted to. Gracious! You see him as the equivalent to the King of England. Believe me, Dad, when I say he's all that and more, he's got many of the Second Sight gifts which all of us here are already familiar with. Ian's brought together many of the indigenous people in such a way that can broker no arguments. They treat him as though he's a messiah of sorts without the birth and death promises of old. He's fulfilled the actual prophecies of old here in our time. His father, Kyle Robson, also had that gift. He kept the people on the surface of Earth during the last 50 years in touch with other humans and brought about help and change to them they couldn't find anywhere else. So yes, he's that important to all of us. 
Well then, looks like I have a work cut out for me. I'll stop by your office after lunch to get my marching orders, as they say, and my kit. Who told you about the kits? I didn't hold your seat without knowing what to do in an emergency situation such as this, son. Go on, go, go eat your food with Delphine. Heaven knows you won't get many chances of doing so in the foreseeable future, I'm afraid. Now go. The Admiral watched as his son joined his wife. He felt a twinge in his gut that did not bode well. He shook his head and finished his meal in silence with no interruptions. I would like to go back to Earth to see how the preparations are going there. Let's join Jean Binos to see how things are getting along. I'm not one to complain, but this water taxi is upset in my stomach something awful. I wonder if they have any of those salts they were talking about as we boarded this blowfish of a boat. Well, hang on. I'll go get you something. Stay right there. These are sure fancy digs for a boat. I'm afraid to touch anything for fear of breaking something. Here you go, now. Drink that down. It's not gonna taste good, but it'll help with the motion sickness. Ah, my word. This is awful tasting. You ain't trying to poison me, are you? No. Hand me the glass and I'll take it to the sink. I'm thankful that Tony Homeperm got us on the radio like she did. We didn't know where to go with all these mountains throwing their goods up like that. That lava will devour everything in its path. You mock my word on that. I know, Gene. That's why I'm making it sure you make it to your destination as quickly as we can. I sure wish I could talk with Lars. They'd know how to smooth any fears you would have about this journey. They're probably holed up in one of those mountains you folks made your homes in. Coal Cache Creek, I believe, is where they came from. Hopefully, they will go to Freehold 3 and stay there until we get the all clear from your folks. I haven't been able to raise them on any communication device. I'll be honest with you, Gene. I'm flat worried about their disappearance. Speaking of Lars Olofsson, ever since that volcano erupted, no one has heard from them. Let's join Ian as he tries to raise them on the radio channels. Home base to Lars? Lars, are you there? Over. Son, I, I don't think they're in a place to receive any radio signals. Be patient. I'm sure they are all right. You know, Lars. They have a tendency to just pop up when they're least expected. Look at that Halloween party we had, and the guests they and Tony Homeperm invited. I don't know, Mom. I have this terrible feeling on this one. Sometimes I hate this gift, as you call it. I don't see it as that at all. It can be a hindrance at the most inopportune times. Ian, how are the preparations going to get these folks through the Scribes' Passage today? We have everyone notified to be in place at the event horizon by 1700 hours. We will start going through an hour later. I will go first to make sure that all is safe to travel to the moon base. When do Casey and Rory go through? I'm frightened for the baby and what effects it'll have on the unborn child. Mom, look at me. Cassie and the baby will be fine. If anything, it will enhance the baby's abilities or gifts, as you call them, for future use. Rory will be with her through the transfer. Mom, Ian has already explained what the possibilities are. Don't worry, I will be just fine. When did you get here? And how much have you heard? Most of the conversation. That doesn't matter. What does matter is Rory and I will be all right, as long as we are together. Rachel, I made a promise to take care of your daughter. I will not shirk that responsibility. Besides, our son has already shown us that we will be a family outside the freehold. Good lord! You mean to tell me he's communicating with you? How? Through my dreams. Beautiful dreams that show us with him. Laughing, playing, and most of all, loving one another. Mom, don't worry. You will have enough to worry about here. You are going to be the scribe. Bobby April will be here as well. You can count on him and his wife to be your right hands, helping you through all of this. We'll have the capability of calling you each week from Hope Colony. Video calls are how they communicate to Earth, so you'll be able to see Cassie's progress with the pregnancy. I'm just thankful she's only at 24 weeks now. Her body will protect Jaron Cohen Forrester.
Mom, you look as though you've seen a ghost. What's wrong? Oh, Cassie, you remembered. Thank you for this. It makes my heart swell for you and Rory. Your dad would have been so proud of you both. That is great news. I didn't even know you were having a boy. Well, congratulations to both of you. Look at the time. I need to get my things, finish packing, and go to the passage door. Cassie, Rory, I will see you in two hours. Always. In a rush to get somewhere. Rory, please make sure that Ian remembers to eat, at least. He won't go without eating. I promise you. Now get over here so we can hug you. We still have a few things ourselves to pack before we go to the moon. A oh boy! What a great revelation to let Rachel in on with the secret they had been holding back. To know that the baby already has the scribe's genes intact is fantastic news. He is going to be a strong leader when the time comes to take over for Ian. This is Tony Holmperm bringing you this news update. Anyone going to Hope Colony needs to be at the scribe's passage by 1700 hours. All luggage going with you needs to be loaded beforehand at 1600 hours. You will find carts available at the terminal. Make sure you have all bags, packs, and boxes marked clearly with your name and designated roll call number previously provided at the meeting this morning. Any household pets going with you must have a collar and leash on, as well as a muzzle for all canines. This is for your protection and others. Animals have a tendency to get upset while traveling. Cages for smaller animals must be closed and tagged as well. In other news, Two Feathers has checked in. He is traveling with Gene Binos and all his clan to South America by way of our naval ships. Two Feathers' parents have already made it safely to the area. He will be staying with his parents, making sure all is taken care of there. Good luck to all and stay safe. There is no news of Lars Olofsson. We hope that they will check in soon. I know I am flat worried about them. Last known location was Antarctica doing surveys there. All communications from the northern locations has been knocked out. I will keep you posted as this story develops. This is Tony Homperm signing off. The date is December 24th, 4067, 1700 hours. The scribe's passage has already been activated. Hope Colony contacted Ian through the 303 satellite link with unsettling news of another possible climate change on Earth. The volcano was building up for another explosion that would cover the entire region. Ian, Rory, Cassie, and Mucklock arrive at Hope Colony just after the passage was activated. Jeffrey Windsor is in the process of moving his entire freehold to Venus Space Station. He has moved as many people that he could find from the Seahold. Let's join Admiral Walker on the moon base with his assigned troops. They are getting ready for the incoming travelers. Klaxons are going off and people are hurrying to their assigned positions. Ian, is everyone okay so far? We couldn't believe the telemetry we were receiving from Earth's monitors. Who all is coming? There's probably no time to get a list together. Rachel is staying behind so that she can organize the freeholds again. This is catastrophic. We had just started making progress on the surface. I will have a better idea of the list as soon as I can get settled in. Where are my quarters, please? Here is the cast in this episode. From the Carlson Chronicles, we have J.A. Babian, Gary Tangoy, Tim Evans, L.R.N.'s Schaff, Shelley Moore, Tony Holmperm, Bart Polin, Ellie Hirschman, Bruce Jaworski, and Daniel Abadie. From Moonbase Hope Colony, the cast was J.A. Babian, Joe Rubolowski, Molly Gibbons, Paul Lavelle, Ryan Birch, Sarah Patterson, Jennifer Blake, Judith Spengler, David Carter, and Kale Blake. Join us next time to find out how everyone fares with this unsteady environment on Earth. Will Venus Space Station handle their influx of travelers as well as Hope Colony? Find out next episode. Until then... I'm Jim Frank, your narrator. Thanks for listening to Tides of Change, a tale from the Moonbase Hope Colony Trilogy. Music is from David Fesslian Studios and used with license to this podcast. 
This has been a presentation of Privy Project Production. For more information about the book, author, or the narrator, visit www.privy-projects.com. We'll see you.